We have with us, Roger, and, and I say this unequivocally, the world's greatest drummer. He's joining forces with Joe Harnell and our band. Here is the great Buddy Rich. right back. How do you like playing where are on the air? How do you like playing with our band? I hate it. <laughs> Hi, but what didn't you like? Buddy? No, I love it. I mean, Joe, Joe, uh, what's his last name? Harnell. <laughs> See how quick you forget? Uh, he's just a, what does he play? Piano. Yes. He's just a swell fella. Swell? <laughs> swell fella and a great band. And it's, I broke my nail on the cymbal, but and I'm very you, upset you about really that. You really make a federal case out of that. Oh, yeah, because they're back. not mine. I just borrowed these. <laughs> the <ad> and <laughs> what do you want me to do about the nail? you want me to get a first aid kit or what? No, I'll just suffer in peace here. I Did you care. like the drums, buddy? I, I, you like those drums? They were made with an erector set this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you bring your own drums when you come Well, it's down? very simple. We open tonight in Washington, and the band and the drums, everything, are on the way to the club. I see. And I just stopped off here because I wanted to see you, Mike. No, I appreciate that. No, buddy. Mike. No, he talks. <laughs> it's Mike? something about you drummers. <laughs> Mike, remember, Roger used to be a boxer, huh? That's right. Whoopee. <laughs> Are you still working with the karate thing? Oh, very hard. I'll be getting my black belt this year. Now with those split nails, you want. <laughs> is that serious? Are you huh? serious? The black belt? Oh, that's you better highest, believe that you're serious That's about the it. highest you can go. The black oh, I've been higher than that. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. Can I get serious with you for just a, a moment? I, because I really want to ask you this. You certainly may, Mike. I mean, really, let's get serious about this. Hold on. Excuse us, Roger. You're We're not going to get serious. I can tell by looking at those eyeballs. We're serious. It, when it says trouble on those eyeballs, we'll never get serious. Let's be serious. I want to ask you about, about a, a drummer like yourself. No, seriously. A big band drummer as opposed to just maybe walking in a little place down the street where a guy's playing with a small group. The difference. <laughs> do you want to talk about your nail again? <laughs> what do you want to know about the difference between a guy that plays in a small club and a big band like mine that plays in an equally small club? I want to know, tell me the difference. What makes a good drummer? Just tell me what makes a good drummer. 
What are the things that you have to be born with? What are the things that you can acquire? A lot of luck. That's uh, one of the uh, really fundamental things. But I think uh, experience and arrogance and uh, uh, a knowledgeable um, uh, knowing yourself and knowing just how good you are and being able to project that genius that you have. And of course, there are other people who I've don't. never smoked, but give me one of those. <laughs> there are, there are um, well, you know, there are, there are many greats in all uh, forms of music, you know, not only great jazz drummers, uh, great jazz piano players, uh, trumpet players, Dizzy Gillespie, Miles Davis, uh, Oscar Peterson, I'm sure, but uh, I didn't wake you up, did I, Roger? <laughs> I was just checking my nails. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would if I were you. Uh, Roger, what there, do you think makes makes a musician you stand ask me. out? Well, you can you can comment. What yeah, makes I'll a tell you what I think out? makes any great musician. I I think there's a certain amount of uh, technique, a certain amount of practice, but I think it's how loose the guy hangs. I really do. You have to uh, you have to be relaxed. I think it's a mental thing. What are you saying? No, for the you. Guy this man, relaxed. this man has no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> This man has no idea at all. Well, all right, what do you think? You hang pretty loose, buddy. Well, I don't know what I'm doing, so you can't use me as an example. But I think that when you have to be playing for years and years and years and play every form of music. When I first started, now seriously, when I first started in, in this business, I played with a little seven-piece Dixieland band, Joe Marcella, at the Hickory House in New York City. Then I, after that, I was there for about a year. And I didn't know anything about Dixieland. It's a different form of music all entire, it's entirely different. Then I went with Bunny Berrigan's band, which was a jazz band. Then I went with Artie Shaw and his all-wife band. And then, uh... <laughs> that, was a, that was a large band. Oh, dude. that was a big band. <laughs> and a lot of subs come in all the time. And then, uh... <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Go ahead, you roll, Yes, buddy. sir. Keep, I really, keep, got keep him, the face really got him stuck now. <laughs> then I went with Tommy Dorsey. Swell fella. And, uh, Every band that I played with had a different approach to jazz and those of course in those days the jazz bands were also playing dance music which i don't believe was the right thing because i think jazz should be listened to <coughs> jazz should not be dance music you know lombardo and people like that should play dance music but when you form a 17 or 18 piece band playing jazz i think it should be treated the same as concert music people should come into the halls and listen and learn and i think when you play with that many different styles of music and that uh, varied kind of leader, you know, you have a guy that played trombone like Tommy and Bunny was a great trumpet player, Artie Show was a great clarinet player, all had different ideas of how music should be played. And you take the best of what they have and then you finally go out and you incorporate your own feelings and your own styles and what you want to play. Mm -hmm. And that's how you kind of develop. How do, you, how do you prepare yourself for the kind of music that you're playing today? Because it is a lot different, but a lot of different beats and things that are going on today. No, not really. If you recall, like, um, going back about 30 years, the, the music that we call rock and roll today, years ago, was called rhythm and blues. That's there right. were race records. And uh, the same chord progressions, the same changes, the same kind of feeling, except that it wasn't a universally accepted kind of music. It was strictly for uh, a different type of audience. And now everybody's accepting it. And uh, it's only the blues, you know, it's just, uh, it's, it's good. A lot of it is good, a lot of it is bad, but most of it is good. There are lots of good groups today. You know, the band, uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears. They're marvelous. Marvelous. Uh, the Chicago uh, Transit Authority. Yes. You know, there's some great things happening in music. Really, very exciting things. The young people really know where it's at. I have to give oh, them a lot of credit. I want to tell you that the songs being written by people like the Beatles and, mm -hmm. and, and Simon and Garfunkel and Jimmy Webb and all right. of them are really lasting songs. Yes, they they're going to be around a lot very, of years. As a matter of fact, our new album comes out this week for Liberty Records, and the um, lead-off tune is a Simon and Garfunkel tune, a thing called Keep the Customer Satisfied. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have a new chart that was written for us by Bill Holman, who does most of our writing. <laughs> and it's a very exciting piece of music. And it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be the best album that the band's ever done. Mm -hmm. Roger, what, did you, what exactly did you mean when you said hanging loose? Just staying relaxed with an audience? Yes, I think that's the most important thing in any performance. I've heard artists vary so much. Take a man even like the great Rubenstein. Some nights he makes an awful lot of mistakes. Other nights, gee, he hangs so loose that nobody can even touch him. I, I know that's a, uh, a, a nebulous thing to talk about, but I think every artist tries to hang as loose as he can when he plays and be in as, as relaxed as he can. You know, in line with and what he's what saying, I, I heard Rubenstein, I heard a quote by Rubenstein, and I believe it was on television where he, sa where he said, 
everybody was raving about him because he's Rubenstein. He's, oh, it was marvelous tonight. He says he gets the one honest review from his wife. He says, it wasn't good tonight. I was bad, and I know she's going to tell me. You right. Know? Is that, do you get a little tired of that, people saying, oh, it was marvelous, Roger? And does your wife really give you the, the straight review? Yes, she does. And she knows. Uh, getting back to Rubenstein, I really think this man makes as many mistakes as any pianist I've ever heard. But when he is good, he is so great that nobody can touch him. Yeah, he makes the mistakes sound good, probably. Well, there we all have our nights. Buddy, but, do you? Well, I don't know about you guys, but uh, <laughs> I very, very seldom make a mistake, and when I do, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's a fingernail. I'm going to tell you, it's a fingernail. You do it, you break a fingernail. Tell me something. You told me you, you didn't. You didn't ever practice. Does that still hold true? Oh, absolutely. You didn't do a thing this morning. You just came in and played. The only thing I did this morning was get bugged with the operator when she called me and told me it was seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I don't, as a, I don't have the time to practice. We're always working. But how do you and keep, the, now, uh, pianists have exercises they do to keep their hands limber. How do you keep your wrists and everything limber? I mean, aren't they more nice when you play, when you just... I do this a lot to the audience. <laughs> <laughs> no, really, do you have any exercises at all you perform? No, none. Not a, really? None that we can talk about. Make no. me... <laughs> Come on, you want to play, you want to play another number with our guys before, oh, before they're sorry. dropping the net? Yeah, they have feelings. They should would, be doctors. Would the fact that a man, when something is wrong with him, would not want to go to a woman doctor, is that discriminating against her? I mean, because I would be a little reticent about going to a woman doctor if I had something wrong. I think your time will come. Do you when you'll come so? to a, Yes, I do. If you believe... I have been to a woman doctor, but not but by it, choice. If you would believe that this woman something about would take care take of your you. clothes off, I <laughs> Don't they put on a white smock? Yeah, but... Uh, Don't they tell you to put on a white smock? There's something about that that... Mm. You know, okay, I'll be back in a few minutes, you say. That's a woman coming in here. Now. Well, I think I it's know. a question of timing, too. I think eventually that you would go to a doctor, whether she be woman or man. And, oh, sure. Uh, no, if somebody all told all me... the women doctors look like William Bendix. <laughs> <laughs> now, 
Not all of them, no. All of them. I've seen some pretty uh, lady doctors, and yeah. they've done uh, marvelous oh, jobs. If somebody but... told me that was her specialty, and I had it, I'd go to that lady, of course. Well, yeah. that's the point, because that's your you, your mind is saying. broadening, and you uh, you want to get the best uh, <laughs> job done. Coming right out of my head. <laughs> is your wife liberated, buddy? My what? Your wife. Oh, my wife. <laughs> oh, well, my wife is now training with Ch with Fraser for the play fight. <laughs> <laughs> My, my wife is the kind of lady that if she had been in the last war, she never would have taken a prisoner. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a nice lady. <laughs> but she's, uh, <laughs> she's, she's, she's really lovely. She's very beautiful and um, Here it comes. not too bright. <laughs> but um, I've been married 17 years now. What do you mean, yeah. not too bright? Who are you to Well, who would stay that? married to me for 17 years? <laughs> oh, Roger? It's going to be a delightful week, but I'll tell you something that if I don't, if I don't take care of something quickly and, and tell those viewers out there that this man's going to play for you a lot this week, I'm in big trouble. You are going to do some segments all by oh, yourself. Oh, you bet I am, Mark. Okay. Looking forward to that. Margaret Whiting, thank you so much for being well, with us. Always a pleasure, Mark. Nice to have you liberated on our show. Thank you. <laughs> and, buddy, you are married to a very intelligent she's and a, a very understanding she's lady. A very groovy. Seventeen lady, yes. years 17. she's put up with you. Wow. Yes. Uh, you better erect a shrine or something. Our thanks to Commissioner Nicholas Johnson. We'll see you tomorrow.